everything that you've ever seen about Cuba is a lie. So when Benny first gave us the news that we're going, I think we all got excited. So I started doing a lot of research. I was looking online and all I saw was a beautiful country. Very colorful photos with all the classic American cars. To know that this is a socialist country, the pieces didn't quite fit to me. We're supposed to say socialism sucks, but how is it gonna, how are we gonna show that if socialism doesn't actually suck? All I can see about Cuba is as this gorgeous Caribbean wonderland. Nothing in American establishment or corporate media will prepare you for what you are about to see when you land in Cuba. It's all lies, all of it. It's communist propaganda, what you see about Cuba. Once we got on the island, going through customs, once we got our bags, then like people came out because we were on the radar and they go into the back and they're like, we have to take this back and ex examine it. They didn't like that there was a drone inside my suitcase. Yeah. And because they didn't like that, they took my passport for seven hours. Emotionally, it went from like, what is this place? When we were in the line to like getting angry, to like getting pretty furious and just like screw this place, to then just kind of like after hour five, you're just like Stockholm syndrome. Like, okay, I guess I speak Spanish and live in uh, Cuba now. And you're just like, whatever happens, happens. And you're just kind of like, submitting to this terrible process. When we left the airport, after seven hours, I think we thought, oh, the worst is behind us and we could not have been more wrong. To see everything online uh, prior, uh, this was like a wake up call. That's when we started to realize that Cuba sucks. So let's do a list of things you can't get in Cuba. Like, like regular things that you can't get in Cuba. Water. Couldn't find water. Gas. Can't find gas. Chicken. Food. We can't find gas. There's no gas available. Every gas station we go to, shut down. Day two, trying to get gas. We are in the biggest city in the country. We are in the most modern city in the country. And this is the beginning of the line to get gas. Here we go. You'll notice people are sitting in their cars. This is not, these aren't parked cars. These are people that are sitting and waiting. It is probably 100 degrees outside. You have multiple people that are pushing their cars. Look, these people are pushing their vehicles because their vehicles are out of gas. This is a functioning line. These are not parked cars. These are human beings inside of their vehicles. They're pushing the cars. They're eating lunch. Here we go. Up there, see that? That's the gas station. And so what we ended up doing was cheating the system. And a guy pops his head into my car door and says, it, it's called, it says, my name is Stalin. We don't actually what? know much about Stalin. We don't know oh. anything about yeah. Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we come home and Benny came and we meet him outside. It was like, hey guys, meet Stalin. He's gonna take me to go get gas. And then he gets in the car and you're like, yeah. see you guys. And we're like, Benny's gonna die. Yeah. That's the last time we'll see him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stalin. So here's Stalin hustling me. I genuinely lost weight in Cuba. Like I genuinely came home roughly eight pounds lighter. The food looked like a child made it. Yeah, it looked like your kids made you a meal on Father's Day. That's all they have. They just get what the government delivers them every day. I think we decided to go grocery shopping because the food was trash and there's no, we can't get anywhere, so we'll just go to the grocery store. So we, we, uh, we drove over there all together. We pulled up to the grocery store and the gates were closed and there was a line down the street. This is insane. All of a sudden, they, the guards come to the gate and they open the gate. And that's when, I've never seen this before, but everyone swarms. People started running, even people that weren't in line, that were just like in the area, just start sprinting in there because 
This is their only chance to get their essentials and the necessities to feed their families. So I really hope that you like Conchita Mango Marmalade because we have a whole aisle of it. Here in Cuba, you can get an individually wrapped hamburger and that's as fresh as the meat actually gets. Oh, this one's all melty. But my God, can you get a lot of the exact same brand of garbanzo beans. And then after you're done buying all these incredible products, you can stand in line for literally an hour, which is as long as we've been standing in line. And I'm telling you, you probably are not gonna like Cuba that much. There was literally no fresh fruit, no fresh meat, no fresh vegetables, nothing. There was one brand of the things they did have and the things they didn't have, well, screw you. So. That is life inside of socialist Pan Americana here in Cuba. Socialism sucks. This area was so developed. All around you there's just beautiful development. Mansions by every American standard, mansions. Just one generation, all of this wealth, all of this beauty evaporated, rotted, unsustainable because nobody has any private wealth to keep it up. This is just a block up from the tourist area and there's so much trash and garbage in the street that it is uh, like the smell is so putrid that you can barely walk by it. There's flies everywhere. It's just an overflowing dumpster of rotting trash. It's really gross. You hear, it's like a trope. Communism, everyone's equal. Equally miserable, equally sad, equally depressed, equally poor. Ha ha ha, it's like you can see it on a t-shirt. No, it actually does suck. Like it actually is that. Like communism succeeds in the crushing of the human spirit and the helplessness and the beaten downness of the Cuban people is one of the saddest things I've ever experienced. I'll never forget that building that me and Josh snuck into walking around. This is a beachfront property and you, it looked like a war zone. It looked like a bomb had hit it. Walk inside, you can see two stories down because the floors are blown out. Same thing upstairs, just crumbled. When I went back outside, I noticed that there's fresh laundry and people inside these buildings, they are still living in this building and I will never forget that. That, to me, is just like, you cannot tell me that socialism works. Look around you. The effects of socialism are everywhere. Crumbling infrastructure and disgusting living conditions. That is what socialism has brought to Cuba. Maybe the socialists in America should take a short trip, a short 90 mile trip and come here and say they want this in America. It was like going through ruins. Uh, the horrific thing is that no one is living in the Pantheon right now. Like, no one lives in the Acropolis. It's a ruin. These are ruins that people are living in. Uh, socialism is popular in America now. What do you think of socialism? Uh, it's very popular. Yeah. Wow. But now, for us, no, it's good. For Cuban people now... Not good? No, my friend. No, it's possible petroleum. Yeah. Nothing. For these the people, no, it's possible go for the walking. Listen to me. Uh -huh. My country is very because everything problem here. Don't have petroleum for bus and Cuban, for car, for drive, for nothing. You understand? My country is very shit. A rec center that looks like this would be completely condemned, but this is a functional rec center in Cuba. There's kids playing soccer right over here. This is the reality of what happens when you have capitalism that goes to socialism. And the people who suffer under this are honestly the kids because this is where they have the play. That sucks. And it pisses you off too because the people there, the people of Cuba are some of the nicest people I've ever met. So watching them live in turmoil, watching them live in ruins, actually kind of like pisses you off. 
And these people don't know any better. Their families have been there for generations. But it'll actually piss you off to see really great people, friendly people, welcoming, warm people, subjugated to living in trash. buzzer at the door would be like police and it actually was and now we're seeing what they're gonna do with our cards and if we're going to you hear the buzzer ringing like it continues to ring it continues to ring it continues to ring we were joking like <laughs> because it woke us up and we were like i was like it's the cops <laughs> and then our translator comes in he's like it's the cops <laughs> <laughs> This was an armed contingent of probably a dozen people, one person in a doctor's outfit, and a bunch of government officials, many of them brandishing weapons, that were bang physically banging down the door, demanding access, and demanding that we leave all of our stuff to them. And so I got on the phone with the embassy, and the guy says, get here now. All right, let's get the out of this country. So, what did she tell you? So, the maid while we're leaving is freaked out, just absolutely freaked out. Uh, the government officials knocking down her door. She fears for her own safety, for her going to jail. Uh, and let us know clearly that's not something that happened. I hope this is the last time we have to deal with the country of Cuba. Like, the, the embassy staff was very sweet, talking with us. Like, whoa, like personally meeting with us, very sweet. But the embassy staff came out and said something horrific and something that was probably the scariest thing said to me in all of Cuba, which is, I can't help you. Like, when you guys are out there, I can't help you. We, he didn't want us to be in that situation. So the, the guy leaned in and essentially said, I'm asking you, leave the country. So we booked that flight, we changed that flight. We were out and within two hours, we were at the airport, gone. We are at the airport in Havana, leaving Havana a day early. That is the uh, that is how our Cuba trip ends, with some some more awesome government. It's heartbreaking that that's a, that's just a reality for the Cuban people. They don't know natural rights. Even more so, heartbreaking is that there are Americans here that would have that governance brought here. I felt like that experience was the front lines of what communism really is. And it's not even, we didn't even see the worst of it, but just we had a fraction of that and to see it firsthand and to realize that's what people are like wanting to bring to America. Seeing everything on social media and online about Cuba and it looking so amazing, then to see the harsh reality of Cuba is just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why that's all you see. This is what it's like to live without a U.S. Constitution. It is the, the rights and the vibrancy and the ability to have a First Amendment right to just say what you want, gone in Cuba. Second Amendment right, gone in Cuba. Third Amendment, Fourth Amendment, you have no rights. And it was, my takeaway is that I have never been happier to be an American. Everything that you have seen about Cuba is a lie.